Roman, is everyone on? You're doing a live right. class, and you that are here in person, Roman seven. When I get done, we'll talk on iPad together, and we'll get the whole class to come up and look at you. I'll turn around on you on Zoomies, you Zoomers. All right, in Romans 7, we are basically going, this will be mine number two. I did mine number one not too long ago, and this will be the second one on the mine. Mine number two. All right. In Romans 7, verse 21, Paul said, I find then a law. And the reason he said I find is because if you go from verse 14 to uh, 20, you go through that terminology, that which I would, that do I not, but that which I would not, that I do, which people call is confusing. But if you just read it, it's not confusing. It just states what it says. But then when you come to 21, he said, I find then, then being the representation of 14 through 20, uh, because of what he said, I find then a law. Now, this is not the Mosaic law. Paul's oh, not talking about the Mosaic law here. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. And I think we all can understand that. You promise God things that you wouldn't do, and you did it again. And you, you find this law. that it, It's like the law of gravity or the law of something else. It, it's there whether you like it or not. It's there. Uh, and we're going to check that out in Galatians in a minute. But we're also going to look at the context of Galatians and try to understand that when he was writing to the Galatians, they had gone back under a yoke. And that yoke's deadly. Okay, It's deadly for your service. It hurts you. Okay. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. And you do you do know that, right? Right? Every wife says that about their husband. Okay. Okay. Uh, the evil's always there. It's always buffeting you. It's buffeting. Buffeting. Uh, for I delight in the law of God. Now you know it's not the Mosaic law. It's the what? The law of God. Now, if it's the law of God. That's not going to change. Mosaic law went out, and there's going to be a New Testament, Hebrews through Revelation. But the law of God is not going to change on this, okay? I find then, uh, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. All right, now, what's in the inward man? It's his mind. Your mind. I mean, you talk to yourself. But don't want to admit it. Wow. Y'all talk to yourself, right? Okay. I delight in the law of God after the after the inward man. And the word after, if you go back, go down with me to chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not what? After the flesh. Not in the flesh. After the flesh. The word after means according to what the flesh is designating you to do to make it right with God. That's what we're going to be going through when we look at all the scripture. It said, not after the flesh, but after what? Not in and not in. After and after. Okay? Uh, what is an afterburner on a jet? The jet is already running. The afterburner is the kick. You have it? So after means something after something else exists. You know what I mean? Okay. So does the uh, the flesh have something working all the time? Does the spirit have something working? Now this is where I'll make Galatians very clear to us when we read it. All right, but let's read on. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my here it comes. What? Mind. Mind. Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So how do you clean up your members to where this changes? It can't. There's a law of God. 
the law of God says this exists. As long as you're breathing, this exists. Mm -hmm. This is not about salvation. This is about you versus the spirit. Mm -hmm. And by the way, is that a capital S? In verse uh, chapter 8, verse 1, it's a capital, is it not? Okay. Verse 23, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now, you find over in Ephesians that when Jesus rose, he led captivity captive. There's your captivity. See, he, he led you. And when you say lead, what does that mean? What does it mean to lead? Okay, you got a, a geese formation. It's in a, in a, in a why? Yeah. What's that first duck doing? Leaning. There you go. Somebody said, why are they flying like that? Because he's in the lead. Oh. The leader leads. Jesus led captivity captive. If he took you up, as in Ephesians chapter 2, nothing can bring you down. Right? Right. right. Now, what are you supposed to set your affections on? Because Why? Because that's, that's where our life is. That's life is hid there, see? So you're to think on what God has done for you. Your life is up there. It's not about this terminal life. This is terminal. This is terminal. It gets old. <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. It does. <laughs> Me and Bob are the next, the oldest people in here, I guess. Bob, you're a little older than me. No, but I think Mama's son is older than us. Ninety-three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amen. Wow. Praise God. Give her a hand. Eighty-three. Uh, Ninety-three. That ain't bad, you know. I, I guess. I don't think I want ninety-three. <laughs> but anyway, see. All right. So, in verse twenty-four, the first time I ever read this verse or ever heard it read, I thought that was wickedness in verse twenty. You know, you hear the word wretched and you go, well, that's, well, he's wretched, he's wicked. That's not, that's not wickedness. That wretchedness there is miserable. You want to serve the Lord, but you got problems. And every time you try to serve the Lord, you got problems. Every time you try to pray, you got problems. Every time you try to do something for the Lord, you got problems because something else is fighting you. Constantly fighting you. Say, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. All right. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This death. He points that out, this death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the what? Mind. The mind, I myself serve what God? What law? All right, the law of God is not subject to change, nor will it. And you serve that law. Okay, now you can't serve that law with your members. It has to be your mind. Uh, I asked Kathy, I was talking to her on the phone today, and I said, uh, where is your mind? <laughs> Where's your soul? How big is it? Can't see it. Now, if your soul's in your heart, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What is that? My heart is just a blood pump. Yeah. Now, there's something runs through my heart that's dead. Blood. That's the problem. I have Adam's blood. Right? So, is your soul your heart? Well, then you lost it in oak heart operation when they pulled your heart out and transplanted. Yeah. They took your soul away from you. Somebody said, if you get another guy's heart, do you have his soul? Oh, no. <laughs> you got another pumper. And your body rejected anyway. You got to take medicine the rest of your life with anything new like that. You have to take a, a rejection medicine to keep it from spitting it out. Okay, so your soul is something that it's hard to it's hard to determine what it is. I heard a movie one time and they said soul was was your electricity. I don't know about that, but your soul is bought. 
right? Mm -hmm. What went to hell in Jesus? Right. His soul. Now, his body didn't go to heaven. And his spirit didn't go to heaven. He, got, he committed his spirit to the Father. That made him die. You have to have three to work, right? When Jesus came up, he had the body that had rested in peace and hope. And he got in the body, went up. He has body, soul, and spirit again. Now, wait a minute. If he has body, soul, and spirit, what makes him different from us right now? We have body, soul, and spirit. But this body needs blood. His didn't. That's what Philippians 3 says. He should change our vile body and fashion it like unto his glorious body that doesn't need blood. Right? And if you don't have blood, you don't have sin. Of sin's in the blood. You with me? I guess when they ate the fruit, something changed the blood. Something changed about it. Might it, it might have been clear water. Who knows? Looking stuff in Adam. But as soon as he ate, something changed. You ever seen those new things you put in water to color it so kids will drink the water? They really don't have any value. Some of them don't even taste. But because it's colored, it looks good. Uh, Miles came out of the bedroom the other day when he had some food there. He had some food. And he said, you need to try this, Papa. And I said, I don't want to. Ah, uh, you won't try it, will you? And I said, I'll remember that the next time I try to offer you some vegetables. <laughs> and he looked at me and went back to bed. <laughs> All right. Oh, wretched man that I am. Now, in the Bible, you have God as I am, Jesus as I am, and what are you? You're I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. I am crucified with Christ. You see how the I am's work, okay? I am who shall deliver me from the body that's death? I thank God. Now you know how you pray through what? Right. That's your prayer. When you're praying, you say, well, am I praying to God or Jesus? Well, right here tells you how you thank God. You go through Jesus Christ. Well, that comes up again. Look in Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For well, we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he never once said you don't know how to pray. That'd be kind of dumb when he tells you, pray without ceasing, pray. Uh, in Philippians chapter 4, 3, or uh, Philippians chapter 4, why would he tell you to pray if you don't know how to pray? That's not what it said. We don't know what to pray for as we ought. I don't know what the next 30 seconds will bring the roof may fall on us. Why didn't we pray that it didn't fall? Because we didn't know. Somebody went to one of them palm readers, soothsayers, and they had gotten in trouble. And he said, why didn't you know? That's a decent question. Hey, why didn't you know and not do it? Because they don't know. Nobody knows but the Lord. The Lord. He sent John over. Man, he just went over and saw Revelation. He does that every day. Over us. John the Revelator went in the future, saw Revelation. Then he wrote it down in 80, about AD 90 on the Isle of Patmos. All right, now watch. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with, uh, say it. Fine. I myself serve the law of God. How's the law of God going to be served in? Now, religion tells me I got to clean this up. I got to make this thing more better. No, I might get more better, but I'm still waiting for the day he changes my vile body. Did I get it clean? If I have a vile body, that has to be changed. Why would he need to change me if I cleaned up my vile body? See, that won't work. All right? So I serve the law with my mind, the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of what? Sin. Okay? Galatians 5. Here's where the gist of it is. You come to Bible study, you hear something you never heard before, and at one time or another you trust it. Now, do you think the devil's through with you? Okay, 2 Corinthians 11, very clear on that. He's very subtle, and he's coming after you to corrupt the simplicity, right? Okay, if you go back 
chapter 3, verse 1. O wretched, uh, O foolish Galatians, Paul knew it. O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Obedience to the truth must be there's a truth you're to obey, right? Mm -hmm. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been heavenly set forth, crucified among you. Verse 5, he therefore that ministers to you the Spirit. Now there's some of the King James Nelsons that will change this. It'll say, he therefore that ministereth to you in the Spirit. In is not in that verse. No, it ain't there. That would be like, was he drunk in the Spirit? No. He that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law by what? Hold this for just a minute. Go to Romans 10. You didn't You do. Romans 10. Verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they not believe? And how shall they believe in him in whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Verse 17, so then, so then is, verse 13, 14, and 15, so then faith cometh how? And hearing by the word of God, okay? Well, the word of God contains the law of God because it is based on the law of God. And faith cometh by hearing. The devil knows that. He absolutely knows that. And he knows that he has to pervert what you hear. He's got to corrupt it. Uh, turn to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel. Now you got the basis of the book of Galatians. The beginning of the book of Galatians is about people that had the truth and weren't obeying you have people come through the Bible study a lot through the years, and then they go back into church. Mm -hmm. They're not obeying what they heard. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. Verse 6, I marvel that you're so soon removed. It, it was it was like it overwhelmed Paul. He said, my God, you heard it. what's wrong with you? And remember, in 3, he calls them fools, correct? Right. You never call a man a fool without a cause. Even Jesus said that. Okay, so I marvel. It's, why? Have you ever wondered why a person don't want to be forgiven and not have to worry about it? They've been blinded. They've been corrupted. They're either blinded and don't see it, or they've been corrupted and taken from it. Okay? Somebody said, nobody could ever take me away from the truth. Don't say that out loud. Don't say things out loud. It'll hurt you down the road. Okay? wonder why the Lord wanted you to pray in secret in your closet. The God's world hears. And you're out there spouting out what you want, and you don't know what you want because you don't know what you need. And so he gives you what you don't need, and old Garth Brooks had it right. Thank God for unanswered prayer. You with me? Leave it alone. Talk to your heavenly Father, which seeth and heareth in secret. I mean, I went through a spell there in conference and everything. They just prayed all the time out loud. And I'm like, why are you guys doing this? It's like you had to pray before every message. Does God not know what the preacher is going to say? Mm -hmm. Does God not know that we're there because undoubtedly we wanted to hear the word of God or we wouldn't have drove to the conference? Right? Okay. So he said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. How could they be drawn off to another gospel? Hold a minute. Second Corinthians 11. I was accused by a man that I was preaching another gospel. He had left the church. 
we went to another Grace Church, Bible Church, and I went to visit him. He said, you're preaching another gospel. I said, I beg your pardon. And he said the gospel was Ephesians 2, 8, 9. He got into the hyper dispensationalism where they believe that Ephesians chapter or Acts 28, a new gospel comes into effect called the gospel of grace of God. The gospel of grace of God involves the gospel of Christ. There's only one gospel that says it's called the gospel of Christ. Okay. And I, I'll give you a ringer here in a minute. You can deal with it in Mark chapter one. All right. Now watch second, uh, second Corinthians 11 one. Would to God you would bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. Okay, number one, who are they supposed to bear with? Who's the writer? Then who are they supposed to bear with? Don't let verse four throw you then. When we talk about bearing with somebody, we think of being with them, right? Bear with them. That's not what he's talking about of who you think it's talking about. Say that again. Now watch. Verse 2. For I'm jealous over you with jealous, godly jealousy. For I have espoused you as uh, you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. How, what is a chaste virgin? The one's been beaten to stay a virgin or Well, probably you stayed a virgin for, for a reason. I mean, what do you think about a virgin? Pure. That's a word. What else? Very untouched. Holy and unblameable. She never went all the way. Are you with me? She's still a chaste virgin. She's stayed a virgin, right? He wants them to stay as a virgin. In their mind, believing they're holy without blame. Do you feel holy without blame? You don't look holy without blame. So about the only ones I see holy without blame, these kids. The rest of you characters, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. You do you have any person that tells you you're holy without blame? Ephesians chapter one, verse three and four. Uh what how did he present you? Okay, so he led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. He led captivity captive, presented you holy without blame in his resurrection. The power of the resurrection was your forgiveness, your redemption, your glorification, your right? So you can serve it in your mind. Okay, now watch. Uh, verse three, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through their sub through his subtlety. Whose subtlety? Serpent. serpent. So now we're talking about the serpent, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you take four and make that the serpent, you're bearing with him. Let's read. Verse 3, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguile lead to his subtlety. So your minds, again, what? Not your flesh. There's one thing you can understand about the flesh, and it's in Romans 6. Let's read it. Hold here just a second. Go to Romans 6. We'll try to get these verses where we just, I know this is simple to some of you, but it may not be simple to everybody. In Romans 6, verse 6. Knowing this, well, how do I know it? In my mind, right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. What does that mean? The old man is dead, right? Now, do you want to present your old man to God? No. That would not be good. I want my old man gone. Now, it ain't gone. I want it gone. And I've got the right to think it is gone. You see what I'm saying? I, I have to adjust my mind. I have to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. 
Romans 12, 1 and 2. My, my trend, he said, be not conformed to this world. The world's going to tell you, if you don't quit doing that, God's going to get you. If you don't come and join this church, you're out of the will of God. If you don't give, if you don't do this, you're out of the will of God. That's what they teach. That's how they keep people coming. Do they leave with any knowledge? No. <clears throat> so in this verse, knowing this, that our old man is what? So when Jesus died, he was you. Now, what was you on the cross? Absolutely. Yeah. That's you dying on a cross in God's mind and his son. Right? Now, why did Christ die for our sins? Any trick question? Why did Christ die for our sin? Because he was made sin. He died. Well, you uh, maybe I didn't say it right. Why did Christ die for our sins? He has to die because that's Hebrews 9 27. It's appointed once for him to die. Jesus is not going to die. He's not got the nature of sin. That's the point of the virgin birth. He will not have an earthly father. Thus, his blood, if he obeys, is a pure sacrifice. I never had that explained to me in a bad story. You see, do not ever mix up sin and sins. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. If this is all that needs to be done to make you holy without blame, Jesus would have left there and went to the Father. Yeah. In Matthew 16, he never mentioned burial. He said, I'll be delivered up, suffer so many things to keep prison, never be crucified, and rise again the third day. Their message is not about him. If it is, why did Peter say, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. How did they get rid of their sins, the 12 apostles and the, the church at Jerusalem? And Water. How do you get rid of sin? You ain't got none. You see how the church are teaching you to confess sins? They're denying what the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is. What is the judgment for sins? Hell. <laughs> Go to Hebrews 9 again. I've done this before. I'm going to do it again. Hebrews 9. Hold on to Romans 6. We're not quite done there. Hebrews 9. I sat through many a class and nobody emphasized this. I'm just dumb enough to believe it means word for word. Hebrews 9. And you know why I'm dumb enough? I love it. I love being holy without blame. Because every day, I ain't holy without blame. I'm the scum of the earth. I'm chief of sinners. Our apostle talked about it. That which I would, that do I know. But what I would, that do I know. I know that well within me, and that is my flesh dwelling. But my salvation doesn't dwell in my flesh. Right. You know that little man up there working him gears, walking around. 
men in black? <laughs> Hebrews 9, 27. As it is appointed unto men, what? Once to die. I mean? Once. I mean? Once. Comma. But after this, is the judgment. There's two things there. I guarantee there's two things there. Two? Okay. Christ took your death. Physical dying on the cross. Did he not? Mm -hmm. And taking that death on the cross. Why is he going to hell? <clears throat> Judge your sins. And if judgment is accepted, He comes up. Be ye kind, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you, in whom you have redemption through his blood. He had to shed his blood to go down there. And the blood is the redemptive atonement. Romans 7 says, We, in whom we now have atonement, we're at one with God. Nothing's wrong. He came up in whom we have redemption through his blood, dying even the forgiveness of sins. And that's the one he and I be messing with. It'll leave Ephesians 1 7 alone and it'll go right to Colossians 1 and mess with it because do you know what verse 13 says in Colossians 1? Let's go there. It's old book. Why is that in it? You know, I mean, messing with Ephesians, uh, Colossians 1.14. It doesn't mess with Ephesians 1.7. Well, let's see. Beam me up, Scotty. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of saints and light. To be an inheritance of the saints in the light, you have to have a glorified body. First Corinthians 2 7, unto our glory. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, 20, uh, 30. Having foreknew you, he justified you and glorified you in Christ. Now, all of sin that comes short. And the glory of God. Right? Washington 1 13. Who hath delivered us? Is there a half in verse 12? Is there a half in verse 13? Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? What's the power of darkness? Over all men. The way you see is death. All the sin that comes short of the glory of God. Wherefore it's by one man, sin in the world, death by sin, so death passed upon all men for all the sin. Right? Okay. If you were to go down without the Lord, you'd be in death. Jesus went in death and hell and cleared it out. He he gave us victory. First Corinthians 15, 55, 56. The only time Paul ever mentions the grave at all, he's talking about Jesus Christ's grave. Am I doing something wrong? No. Now watch. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness. Hold here, compare this. Hebrews 2. What's scary about dying? You don't know what it's like. It's a mystery. Remember the old gal I'm justified and had the old guy sit down with me. She poured her apple pie in both glasses. So he figured it okay to drink because he saw her drinking it. And he started, whoop, whoop, whoop. and she said, it wasn't in the apple pies in the glass. And he died in front of her. She said, take it easy. You're fixing to find out the mystery. It is a mystery to you. You don't know what the journey's like unless you read Paul. Are you with me? 
I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body or body. God knows. I don't know. Caught up third heaven. Mm -hmm. The worst part of the whole thing is he come back. Yeah. God help us if we had to come back. Yeah, I think when you get really sick, going looks better, don't you? You say, you're all walking around healthy. We've got two or three people with us, several people on the that are healthy. And so when you begin to look at that death, you go, <clears throat> what's it going to be like? Because you don't know. Unless you read Paul. Mm -hmm. And Psalms. Precious in the eyes of the Lord, death is saints. You see, death has been taken care of. Hebrews 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, not by death, through death. Where do you reckon Jesus, how would he make through death? Well, he left living, went down into hell and death, and went through it and come out. So, through death. Now, you understand, if he don't go through death, if he just goes to death, who wins? That's what 1 Corinthians 15 is about. Oh, death. Oh, death. It's like he's talking to somebody. Oh, death. Now watch, verse 15, uh, 14, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is, who? 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to. Did I hear the word right? Was it bondage? Bondage. Galatians chapter 5. And get Colossians again, I apologize. Am I making any sense? Wouldn't it have been great to know it? Uh, these young kids don't have any idea, but they got a sponge brain and they hear everything. It soaks up. And the more their parents let them hear the Bible, the more possibility it is later on to get it. You cram that religion down and it's the hardest thing in the world to get that religion out of them. All right, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Now, where am I going to find a relationship, a verse that will give me some kind of relationship with that? Second, in Galatians chapter 5, liberty. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Hey, Teresa. Are you with me? Liberty, hold here, go to Second Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, Moses went up on the mountain. He's the one allowed. God's going to lay some things out to him. But he's going to bring death down. You know what the Ark of the Covenant is? It's a casket. Death lies in it. And you know what the death is? It's the law. The law won't save you. Okay? It was never meant to save. It was to meant to show you what you did wrong. Not you. We're Gentiles. Gentiles don't even know what righteousness or justification is about. You tell a Gentile, well, you start teaching him right, righteousness, you know what you're talking about. It's Deuteronomy 6. You got to keep the whole law and all the ordinances to have it be your righteousness. Paul goes in there and says, There's no righteousness. You understand the Jews listening to him thought he was a nutcase. Okay, now what? Second Corinthians 3 13, not as Moses which would avail over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is what? So what was abolished about Moses? Well, of course, Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. And the priesthood was changed from Levi to Judah. The high priest was Jesus. And the 144,000 were the royal priesthood. Okay, now watch. He said, but when, but their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the same veil and taken away in the reading of what? 
Old Testament, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's not the New Testament. They're still offering the law, sacrifice. You with me? So you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what do they do? Keep them in the law. Blind. They're blind. Where do churches stay? Blinded. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're telling you to be the meat. You'll inherit the earth. I don't want the earth. Mm -hmm. I don't want no part of it. Never was promised it, so why should I be trying to get it? Okay? The parables. I don't understand the parables. Written to you. Told the apostles, you have ears to hear. The parables. I've heard, had people teach the parables and they try to live up to them. And I go, are you out of your mind? And the Baptist church preaches them about every three to five months because they run out of something to preach because they can't go into Paul's letters. And they go into Paul's letter, ain't going to be on the left. Right? You can't go to Paul's letter about tithing. You can't go to Paul's letter about the law. You can't go to Paul's letter about staying on the earth. So you got a problem. You got to stay out of Paul. Now you want to reach in there and get grace. But grace with their teaching is works. Works ain't grace and grace ain't works. That's Romans 11. Okay. Now watch again. He said in 2 Corinthians 3, 16. No, 15. But even to this day when Moses read the veil is upon their heart. So this heart has a veil on it when you read the Old Testament. Now what happens? Nevertheless, when it, the heart shall turn to the Lord. How can you turn the heart to the Lord? Well, it please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them to believe. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The preaching of the gospel of peace. I'm peace with God. Why am I at peace with God? Because he made peace. He made it through the Lord. All right, now wait a minute. He said, <clears throat> nevertheless, when it, the heart shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away, now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is? Liberty. There's the liberty. Okay, now watch. Go to Romans chapter 8. You see, it's all going to reflect back to the book of Galatians of somebody that put themselves back under the yoke of bondage. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about a yoke? The yoke is on you? No. The yoke. Okay, what if you put a Budweiser Clydesdale with a Shetland pony on, under the same yoke? <laughs> Somebody's not going to be touching the ground, are they? Now, can a Shetland pull what a Clydesdale can? No way. So, are you going to yoke them together? Okay, Second Corinthians chapter 6 said, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Well, the only way I know you can get yoked it's to go back in the yoke of bondage. Because right. he's talking to somebody that had come out. Mm -hmm. Everybody all right? <clears throat> Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? <clears throat> okay. To be a son of God, what must the Spirit of God do? For the son. In the verse. That's to lead you. <laughs> Correct? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See, understand why Paul wrote the letters that he did, who he's writing to, and the problem they had. <clears throat> okay, turn to Galatians 5. Now, get me also 1 John. First John chapter one. Now, bless your soul. This is the walking papers of all your religions around you. First John chapter one. And this is where they get the verse so they can walk with it. Okay. First John chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sins. Yeah or no. I was taught that when I was a boy. I've had people tell me all the time. I say, you believe Christ died for your sins of spirit? Absolutely. How many sins he died for all of them? Do you confess sins? Well, of course. <laughs> I said, are you out of your mind? You're not being led. And I can show it to you. 
they don't give me time, but I'll show it to you. First John, if we confess our sins, what's the if? If you do it, you will. If you don't, you won't. It's just like Mark 20, uh, Mark 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, if he believe not, he ain't going to get baptized. And these signs should follow them that believe. How many of you ever got baptized in your life? What signs followed you? Then you didn't believe. Then you didn't believe. According to the verse, you didn't believe. Yeah or nay? These signs shall follow them that believe. You got baptized, you believe. Where's the signs? Nobody ever is answered. Well, I didn't have any signs. But you didn't believe. People hate the truth. Don't they? <laughs> All right, First John. If we confess our sins, he faithful and just to what? Forgive us all sins. What did it say about crucifixion there? What did it say about blood? Okay. So if they confess their sins, he's faithful and just to what? And cleanse us from? You're never going to be cleansed of unrighteous. You've been made righteous. All right. But wait a minute. Look in chapter 2, verse John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last time. Oh, my goodness. We're not in the last time. So the book is clarified to me what time they're in. I'm going to believe the book says what it means, what it says. They're in the last time. That doctrine is for the last time. Now go to 1 John chapter 4. How many of you have sinned this week? <laughs> Okay. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Rot roll. Verse 8. Now, Teresa raised her hands. So we're going to read verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Yeah, your name, folks. The Baptist, when you get baptized, tell you to read the book of John, first three. John, the book of John. No, three. Three, eight. Three, eight. Three, eight. Read it and see. He that committed sin is of the devil, right? Now let's go back to verse four. Now, if I seen Teresa sinning, I could pray to God and get her free of it. Really? Holy cow. Look what it says. Verse four. Whosoever commits sin transgresseth also. Okay, here we go. The law. So I got to have the law to make transgression. Right? That's what the verse says. No, no. In accordance to the words first, the words you say it was what time was written? So they undoubtedly don't have their sins gone without confession. That don't sound like the cross. No. But let's read it again. Whosoever commit a sin transgresses also the law. For, say it with me, sin is the of the law. Romans 2. Got to go through these verses with you. Paul says, I have not known sin except the law of sin. Paul was a traditionalist that lived as touching the righteous law. Blame it, he offered sacrifice. And he offered them in a traditional form because he was in iniquity. And when the Lord separated him from his mother's womb, which is Jerusalem, his mother was Jerusalem, Oma, Alma Mata in Latin, which is their college graduation, Alma Mata. That's old my mother. Your mother has taught you how to live. That's the Jewish religion he was in. And when God separated him from his mother's womb and called him by grave, he took him out from under the law. Now watch. In Romans 2, verse 6 to 14. For when the Gentiles say it, which have not the law. Romans 9. Verse 1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. He said that because in Romans 3, he said, let God be true and every man a liar. But he's not, he's not lying. He is saying what God says. 
I say the truth in Christ, lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to flesh. And he did not say I wish. Right? He said I could wish. That's like you're stuck in the mud. I could wish I am, but I ain't. I'm going some other way. Right? I could wish, but wait a minute. Who are Israelites? Who's Paul's brethren? To whom pertains the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and Israel is given the law for first, last, and always. And the law is their teacher, which is going to show up in Galatians again. Okay? Now, <clears throat> look back in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, the devil, what do you want people to be under? Law. Of course. How do you put them under the law? Very subtly. Confess their sins. Very subtle. Mm -hmm. And every church teaches it. It's very subtle. It's like did he die for all your sins? Absolutely. You confess your sins? Of course. They're taught to confess their sins to stay in a relationship with God. You're in a body of sin in the first place. And it ain't going away till it's dead. We'll go to Romans 6 in just a minute. Everybody okay? What time is it? Am I going over? Okay, keep me informed in there. All right, now look in uh, 2 Corinthians 3 again. Verse 17. Now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, liberty to sin. That's what people say you're saying. Oh, you're telling me I can just go out and do anything I want. You are, unless you're going to get caught, and then you don't do it because you're afraid to get caught. <laughs> and if you're confessing sins, you are sin. They say, great believers, they live, you, they say, you live any way you want. You cut and bigger as you want. But you're under such bondage, you're scared because of what that flesh always does. The flesh is never going to do it right. Read it. Romans 7, your flesh ain't going to do right. Well, wait a minute. If you're led of the Spirit, are you a son of God? And I, I'm talking about the body being the sons of God, right? Yeah. Okay. Turn to Galatians. If you be led of the Spirit, you are the sons of God. Galatians chapter 5, then. You want to see whether you're led of the Spirit? Here you go. Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, say it. Then you can't confess because you ain't under the law. Where there's no law, there's no transgression. Right? Oh, now go to Galatians again, chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the, say it, the liberty. Do you know why he's writing this to the Galatians? They had the Spirit of God and went out and got circumcised. And when you get circumcised, you're dead or do the whole law. And what did he call them in chapter 3? Oh, foolish Galatians who have bewitched you. Well, who's the bewitcher? Well, it's 2 Corinthians 11, Satan. Go back to 2 Corinthians 11. People hate grace people because they're not under bondage. They're not under the yoke of bondage. And they know that no matter what about them, and they don't go out and intentionally kill and rape and pillage. That's not grace believers. But because you're a grace believer, you're saying, oh, you're already forgiven. They think that you're bad. You is. But you is holy and without blame. And so you try to do the best you can. That which I would, that do I not. Romans 7 is very clear on that. And Paul says, I try to attain 
as the perfection of the resurrection, even though I'm already perfect. Are you with me? That's Philippians 3. And so what does he do? He says, I press. What is press? I used to do that all the time. Remember we used to go? Finally, well, I, I got it right. I said, this is a waste of time. <laughs> oh, I guess that goes to CrossFit. I said, wake me up when you get back. Amen. I said, so I tried. I, I joined for about six weeks, and they had bets on how long I'd stay. And I did it. I was bored to death. I did that all my young life, buddy. I had a six pack. It's just hit a little bit now. <laughs> I had a six pack. I did all the sports. I was in A1 shape. When I met my wife, I had a six pack then. I was 27 years old. I walked. I even walked to work sometimes. And then I'd go run. I was in great shape. And you know what? I was bored to death with it. I'd rather eat ice cream. <laughs> I don't eat in excess because I don't want to hide them all. <laughs> well, still got a few. I mean, folks, he that beateth the air for naught. Why do you want to live forever? I want to live healthy. There's a way to do it. Moderation. Mm -hmm. If we go to a buffet, you don't eat it at all. <laughs> you have a plate or two, you don't have to eat the whole thing. I see people up there like, would you hurry up? I gotta fill my plate. They got the plate stacked. I was like, this is a buffet. Leave it alone, man. Come back. Gee. Americans are buffets. That's exactly what. Now what? Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse four. Uh, three, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguile deep through their substance. Is there any doubt in Eve and Adam's mind what they're not supposed to do? Uh, now, why did he put both threes there? <laughs> Give them a choice. Yeah. Now, you know why God said the gospel of Christ, the power of God? He's going to give you choice. Mm -hmm. You can either trust it or you don't trust it. If you receive it, you receive it. If you don't receive it, there'll be a day when you received it not, you're damned. That's right. And God will laugh at your derision, according to Psalm chapter 3. I believe or might be Psalm 2. All right, now what? He said, through his substance, you sow your minds to be corrupted from what? Simplicity. How simple is it? Christ died for our sins. According to scripture, he was buried and he rose again the third day, satisfied God. It's simple, ain't it? Do you know the day you get it, you go, How did I miss that? You know why? You were blinded. If our gospel be hid, hid to them or lost, in whom the God's world blind in the minds of them, which believe not less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ is shining unto them. The will of God is to have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There's one God and one mediator between God and men and the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for. You've been bought whether you like it or not. And 2 Corinthians 6 says, don't take the grace of God in vain. Because if you receive the grace of God in vain, one day God's going to laugh at you because you received not that you might be saved. Yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. All right, now verse 4. For if he cometh preach another what? You had the earthly Jesus preach to you most of your life if you went as in religion because they were preaching to you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when he's alive. All right? Whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit. Oh, how can I do that? Translations. Yeah. Not inspiration. Translations. Yeah. Doting about words. The King James said, oh, it's too old and archaic. I don't understand these vows. How hard is thee and thou to explain? <laughs> oh, your time? I'll go over a little. The people are still there. I'm staying a little longer. <laughs> All right. Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with who? Who's him? It's verse one. Don't let it fool you. It's verse one. 
Who am I supposed to bear with if somebody comes along and does that? Paul or whoever delivered it to you. See, that's why Galatians says what it says. Turn back to Galatians. I, I'll just a minute, I'll shut up. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4, uh, verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do what? Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are that are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you? Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. And a little leaven, leaveneth the whole bunch. Turn back to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you, this only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the, spirit, in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Right here, the faith of Christ, which is the righteousness of God died for our sins. He left his body. It was in a tomb of ground. He left his body and went down into hell. He took the judgment of sins. When he arose, he got back in that body and he took that body up to the Father and took you with him. Amen. And he presented you holy without blame before him in love. Yeah. You know why you kept it? Last verse, Ephesians 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you, all, uh, you also, after you trusted, uh, in whom also, in whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit promise, which is the earnest of the of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory the moment that you trust what you believe you're sealed and you're captive and Romans 8 I lied so I proved the Bible true Romans 8 Romans 8 our apostle gives you an assurance in Romans 8 Verse 36, here's your problem in life as it's written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Amen. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Amen. Nay, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loves us. That doesn't matter. We're still conquerors. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to do what? which is where our Lord Amen. he's seated at the right hand of the Father he intercedes, he mediates he secured you you cannot lose your salvation Amen. what you can do in Galatians is you can fall from grace didn't say you get lost and you know why he's writing to them they can recover mm -hmm. You can't do that in Hebrews 6. It's impossible for those that weren't enlightened to come back. That's not our doctrine, folks. That's the doctrine of 1 John. Amen. Amen. Hello, people. Amen. Amen.